I've wanted to review the Jack Ryan series on Amazon Prime for a while now, and I'm just now getting to it, but as a result, I've had some time to put my thoughts together and also compare it to what's happening in the world today, politically. I think Jack Ryan is best described as an adaption of a Cold War era hero and universe and modernizing it to a new generation of people, a new world, and a new belief system. And in that purpose, I would say it was mostly successful. A Tom Clancy is, or I should say was, one of the most successful authors in modern history. He packaged Cold War hysteria in the perfect way to capture the imagination of American boomers everywhere. He put, he knew all of the right buttons to push, and he pushed them hard continuously. And you can see this. If you read his books today, they still have that um, copy-paste Cold War mentality that uh, most people in his generation viewed the world. And this worked. This is why his books sold and continued to sell for decades. And they hit the silver screen in several blockbuster films and continued to capture the imaginations of people and uh, were also a way for those people who enjoyed the books to introduce the stories to their children. However, even Tom Clancy apparently had an expiration date. His worldview grew stale, especially with the end of the Cold War. I mean, and Actually, the films, I think, extended his popularity longer than they would have on their own because uh, most of the films really stay away from the Soviet Cold War politics that he talked about at length. The, the, most of his movies were in the 90s when Cold War was over, so they touched on his plot lines that were unrelated to the Cold War, and his Cold War mo mentality they mostly left out. And also, I think this was uh, political. They wanted these movies to be internationally successful, and this uh, motivation for international box office success only grew with time, so they really mostly stayed away from his Cold War politics. But... You could really see this generational shift in 2002 with the Ben Affleck adaption, uh, Some of All Fears. Filmmakers just were not comfortable with uh, Tom Clancy's boomer conservative, uh, bad Islamic terrorists fighting against, destroy, wanting to destroy America. And they just, they just cut that out. They replaced the Islamic terrorists with generic bad Austrian Nazis which is a little ridiculous, honestly, because this idea of neo-Nazis being a large and powerful enough movement to topple the world order is just absurd. But uh, despite the failure of that film, the ideas of Tom Clancy were not destined to disappear, as we came to see with uh, Jack Ryan, which is a reboot. It is a reboot. It it's cuts out the stuff that Tom Clancy was pushing to boomers and replaced it with uh, ideas that younger people now, and by younger person I define as anyone under 40, would find appealing. Because people younger than 40 tends to read Tom Clancy books and just not find them appealing or actually find them repulsive. They think that they're very bigoted. They're just, they're, uh, reading a Tom Clancy book is like listening to your crazy uncle at dinner. It's just, it's tiring. But uh, Jack Ryan took that, replaced the boomer conservative with the modern, young, cool, hip, liberal. And so I'm going to talk about how these liberal ideas evolved from the first season all the way to the end. So in the first season, it did, funnily enough, start with the Islamic terrorists that uh, the Sum of All Fears film was afraid to touch. And honestly, in hindsight, just from a 
realism sense. It's almost as if the creators of the Sum of All Fears movie were actually right to replace the Islamic terrorists with uh, Nazis because the because now that the war on terror has gone on for more than 20 years, it's just absurd to believe that uh, Middle Eastern terrorists would have the capability to bring down Western civilization, that it would even be a serious threat. You know, we've just, we've been sitting here more than 20 years since 9-11, this big jihad against Western civilization just uh, never happened. The first season of Jack Ryan, I would actually say, is the strongest by a large margin, despite the absurdity of the plot. And I also see how it would appeal both to older people who enjoyed the original Tom Clancy stories and it would also appeal to younger people who have not read them or tried to read them and didn't like it. Really, you see this conscious effort to humanize the baddies, to humanize the Islamic terrorists on the surface. And by on the surface, I mean it uh, checks all of the social justice boxes. It, it, you can almost feel the screenwriters congratulating themselves for this nuanced plot about the modern world. And this, I actually think, is the definition of liberals and their worldviews. They have this lesser of two evils perspective that um, I find particularly obnoxious and condescending. It's just, it's just ridiculous. You know, it, it, it's, it, you know, they congratulate themselves, so it's like, oh, look, we're portraying Muslims as people, but, you know, it's, it's actually not true. They, it's actually, I would say it's actually um, an exercise in Orientalism. You know, Orientalism being that uh, artistic and intellectual movement in the colonial era, when Western authors and artists who were somewhat prohibited from portraying Western Christian people in a certain way had free creative and artistic license to portray exotic people in other lands in a very sexualized and condescending way. And we see that exact attitude here in uh, Jack Ryan. The Islamic Middle Eastern men are these brutish barbarians and their women are very enticing and sexually appealing and um, viewed as and portrayed as desirable and that's exactly what Orientalism is and that's um, and that's actually a way colonialism was marketed to people back home. You should join the British Navy, you should join the British Army, because there's all these enticing half-naked women waiting for you in faraway lands. And that's, ironically, what's happening here in Jack Ryan, to an extent, though it's applied a little differently. It's a way for uh, both liberals and older conservatives to watch this and feel good about themselves and say, oh look, you know, I, I respect the Muslims despite their ignorant and stupid beliefs and barbarism. You know, look at me, I am so enlightened. It's, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a little infuriating actually. It's, and this thread of snooty liberalism gets even worse in the side plots of the first season, they have this one drone pilot who feels bad because he realized that some of the people he killed with his drone didn't deserve it, they were innocent, and he goes through this whole nauseating redemption arc. And actually, the biggest plot arc in the first season is, of course, Jack Ryan himself. He's this liberal guy who joins the CIA to change it from the inside. That's literally a line from the episode, one of the episodes, I actually almost died when I heard that line because it was so stupid. It's just like I joined the CIA to change it from the inside. Well, good for you, buddy. And of course, by the end, he's not changing it from the inside. He's part of the system. I'm not sure if this was meant to be some sort of self-awareness or maybe it's just the reflexive meta 
attitude that liberals apply to everything. And that's what they did here, because Jack Ryan absolutely becomes institutionalized. He's just like everybody else. And of course, his uh, boss slash partner, the token black dude, and I don't say that just to be edgy, he is a token character. He's a Muslim. Yes, he's a Muslim. And they bring this up repeatedly, that he's this black Muslim guy in America. And it, he is very much a token character because he's used like a token. Uh, when they go to France and they meet these bigoted French guys, and he can talk down to them and say, well, you don't have the right to be bigoted because I'm a black Muslim. You can't say bad things about Muslim because I'm a Muslim. It's just, it's, it's so, so tedious and so boring. It's like, well, congratulations, you're a Muslim who works for the CIA. No one cares, really. But liberals watch this and they can cheer for diversity. Well, great, our intelligence community has Muslims in it. It's really no different than a white conservative saying, I have, bla I have a black friend. You know, liberals can say, well, I have a black Muslim friend. Good for you, buddy. It's so exhausting. I feel exhausted even thinking about this. And it, also from a technical filmmaking storytelling perspective, I will say the... Um, it's interesting because they do get a lot of details right. I, mean, I, I remember watching these shows and actually being a little surprised at the attention to detail in some of the... Um, and they talk about military operations, uh, just the operational aspect in, in, in itself. The words they use, the terminology they use is often very spot on, but it also gets a little ridiculous sometimes and a lot of it is just lazy writing and it's also a little self-inflicted because frankly uh, ragtag terrorists are not a terribly intimidating enemy no matter how you try to pump them up um, and you can see this how the how advanced technology helps them helps the good guys the cia in some episodes but then it's, it's it's missing in other episodes. There are fights that the bad guys need to win sometimes for the plot to move forward. So uh, the good guys' advanced weapons like drones and satellites are suddenly missing. That actually happened in almost one of the first episodes where the terrorists attack a CIA camp in Yemen. And for some reason there are no aircraft, there are no drones, there's nothing. Just some guys in pickup trucks attack and win, which is absurd because of course there would be aircraft, of course there would be drones, but for example, but for some reason that episode they were missing because, well, you can't have the show be over in the first episode, that'd be silly. So the writers expect you to suspend disbelief at command. As the first season goes on, it gets more preachy, more tiring. Um, you, they, uh, Jack Ryan is introduced to the bad evil human trafficking pipeline running from uh, conflict in Syria and Iraq through Turkey and he's all upset about it and it's so sad and it's it, it's tedious and it's also whitewashing because of course there's no acknowledgement anywhere in this show that the reason that human trafficking pipeline exists is because of our wars in the Middle East um, that were ongoing when this show was filmed and are still ongoing now as I speak. Uh, if there were no wars, there would be no refugees, there would be no desperate people that could be preyed on by uh, gangs and the mafia. However, all that said, the first season holds together the strongest. It really starts to fall apart in the second season, which is uh, explicitly set in Venezuela. And the, here's, and the interesting thing about the second season is that it is explicitly based on um, a Tom Clancy novel, uh, Clear and Present Danger. Now, Clear and Present Danger was also set in Latin America. However, there is very little similarity between the Tom Clancy book and the Jack Ryan TV series. And it has less to do with the specific events and the plot and more to do with the moral framework. And it shows. 
Because love Tom Clancy or hate him, he did have a sense of morality. He did see his attempts to distinguish right and wrong, and his character, Jack Ryan, as portrayed in the books, does... He is described as a Boy Scout. He, he never goes against his moral code. He always tries to do the right thing. And this is apparently also what Tom Clancy believed. In the book, Clear and Present Danger, as well as the Harrison Ford movie, the President of the United States orders illegal military actions in a South American country. And... This is portrayed as wrong. Uh, when Jack Ryan finds about it, he has to get personally involved. He has to rescue some American soldiers who were, ca who were captured while performing illegal military operations. Uh, but as this plot develops, it's very clear that this was a wrong thing for the president to do. He was wrong to send troops to another country without congressional approval, to just do it by himself and to invade the sovereignty of another country without any declaration of war, without um, his own legislature even knowing about it, this was wrong. However, in the Jack Ryan show, it's the opposite. It's portrayed as good. Um, Venezuela, the Venezuelan government is portrayed as evil and it's just good to violate their sovereignty and to invade them and to explicitly send American troops to kill their soldiers, to kill their police, to threaten their president, to just walk all over them. It's kind of, it's possibly one of the most astonishing developments in recent cinematic history because usually movies and shows, at least mainstream shows, try to have some sensitivity about the political situation as portrayed even in their fictional universe. The second big takeaway I had from the second season was how the opposition candidate against the Venezuelan government is a woman who is openly working with the USA against her own country. She is repeatedly shown cooperating with enemy intelligence operatives. Uh, she openly advocates for sanctions against her own country, which is very weird for a person who wants to be the president of that country. And it seems like the show is advocating against democracy. I mean, really, how could anyone watch this show and even think democracy is a good idea if you know that the USA is going to try to subvert your election and elect the worst possible person for it, who is going to work with American corporations to steal all of your natural resources and advocate sanctions if you don't cooperate? It's, it's mind-boggling. And unfortunately, it mirrors real life where the USA does, in fact, push weak and puppet candidates in countries around the world and sanctions the countries that don't cooperate. Yeah, of course, we have the third season with uh, the bad Russians and the way that's portrayed. It's, it's interesting because on one hand you can see why they set up the bad guys from Russia as a a separate movement from the government because there were... because even as bad as the relationship with Russia has been lately. Filmmakers are still careful about um, explicitly showing America at war with them, so it's convenient to have a non-government entity within Russia that they can be designated as the villains of the show. However, this serves another purpose too, because if you're if you want to portray Russia as a mafia state that's about to collapse, then you can show non-government entities that don't fear arrest or any kind of government interdiction on their actions, then this is good. This is, this is still a good propaganda purpose for your show, to have these vague baddies who want to bring the Soviet Union back. But ultimately, so at the end of the day, Jack Ryan is a neoliberal fantasy that very successfully combines Cold War right-wing talking points and more modern 
liberal talking points and meshes them perfectly together into a blob that apologizes and engages in apologetics for the modern deep state. Arguably the biggest difference between the Tom Clancy books and the modern Jack Ryan series is that Tom Clancy was a very typical boomer American patriot, so it's all about America, America is great, American exceptionalism, blah blah blah. Um, Jack Ryan really is not about American patriotism, which makes sense because liberals tend to dislike the idea of patriotism. Being proud of your country is a bad thing. It kind of suggests you're a Nazi. So this show is less about American exceptionalism and more about liberal globalism. Jack Ryan is not an American patriot. None of the side characters, none of his co-workers in the CIA are portrayed as American patriots. Even the military people are not portrayed as gung-ho patriots. They're all acceptable liberal characters. The cause they're fighting for is not American exceptionalism, it's not the interests of the United States, it's not the people of the United States, it's the interests of liberal globalism. Which again makes sense because none of the wars going on right now really benefit because none of the wars going on right now really benefit us in any tangible way. It's all about pushing global homogeneity on the world. Another thing that I found interesting is how this show makes a huge deal out of not being racist, but is actually extremely racist. All of the villains are racial stereotypes, and it's tiring. The American characters are ridiculously diverse, deliberately diverse, and it's almost jarring. It's just very tiring to have this agenda pushed in every single medium. This super diverse liberal group of good guys fighting the bad, fighting the bad nationalists. And it's interesting how the category of bad guys is expanded to include nationalists of basically every type. Uh, White Russians are bad. Um, Islamic guys who don't want America bombing their country are bad. Uh, French nationalists who want France for French people are bad. Every type of person who prefers the interests of his own people over the interests of the globalist blob, the world order, as they call it, is a bad person. Thanks for listening, and if you haven't already, please subscribe and check out my blog at readingjunkie.com.